Hi everybody, Ken Brer from Ken Brer Team Building Leadership and Coaching. And today I wanna to talk about being in the right place at the right time. And as complicated as life can get, and it does certainly get complicated, uh, I think at the end of the day, that is what we all search for, our own personal right place at the right time, where when you find it, the long days don't seem as long, the arduous challenges don't seem as arduous, and you become a mountain climber and someone who seeks new challenges because you're coming from a place of confidence versus a place of doubt or panic and uh, the negative emotional tailspin that oftentimes we find ourselves in when we're not in our right place at our right time. And uh, to give you an example of the right place at the right time, many of you know I played professional football. What many of you don't know is the significance in terms of the injuries I, you know, I endured through that time. Uh, five knee surgeries, two ankle surgeries, broken some bones in my back, uh, broken fingers, concussions. One time I went across the middle against the BC Lions thinking I was safe and I caught the ball and I turned and there was a set of brown eyes right there. And I woke up on the turf, the doctor's looking down at me. I asked him what happened. He says, you got hit. I said, yeah, I know that. I know I got hit. But what happened? He says, well, you broke your nose, three teeth through your lip, just looking at your shoulder and a concussion. I've torn rib cartilage, uh, torn quads, pulled hamstrings. Now, some of you might be saying, Ken, you are the most courageous football player ever to play the game, or you may be the most incompetent football player to play the game based on a list of injuries. But I can tell you this, regardless if I was competent or not, I loved playing the game. And all those injuries didn't seem that bad. My hardest day, my most challenging, arduous day playing football or anything that I was passionate about, really it wasn't that tough. And when you're in the right place at the right time, uh, moments just come your way. And I'll give you an example. Uh, I was playing for the Hamilton Tiger Cats back in 1992, and I was asked to go to the Hamilton Boys and Girls Club uh, to hand out some t-ball trophies. Now, I definitely said yes because I grew up as an Ottawa Boys and Girls Club gym rat, and uh, it, it just seemed this, it was something that I wanted to do was uh, uh, pay it forward, give it back, and hopefully maybe inspire some kids that I, were, I would, would be meeting at the Hamilton Boys and Girls Club, the same way I was inspired by the Ottawa 67s or the Ottawa Rough Riders or the police uh, service guys or emergency services guys in their community when I was growing up in Ottawa and they were taking time out of their schedule to play road hockey with us or play basketball or play bumper pool, whatever it was. They invested their time and uh, really uh, provided a positive influence on me and, and many of the kids uh, who had very little in terms of wealth from in terms of our families but we were very wealthy in terms of the experience we drew from going to the boys and girls club so uh 1992 hamilton boys and girls club and i show up and i'm wearing my hamilton tiger cat sweatshirt and uh the fact of the matter is barely any of the kids knew who i was some kind of knew the sweatshirt but they really didn't know who i was and uh they're ripping around their t-ball t-shirts now if you know what t-ball is essentially it's baseball one-on-one for kids they put the ball on the tee they get a free swing at it and then they run. Some run to first base, some run to second, some run to outfield, some just don't know what to do. But it's t-ball and the kids are having a blast. And these kids were having a blast at their year-end banquet. And they got their Blue Jays and Yankees and Dodgers t-shirts on. They got ketchup and mustard and likely boogers on them as well. And the coaches sort of gather them all up and get them to line up so I can sign the autograph cards. And uh, some of the kids are thanking me. Thanks, Kevin. I was like, Kevin, it's Ken. Right. Uh, and thanks, Mr. Bear. I say, yeah, it's not Mr. Bear, it's Mr. Everywhere. But it's, you know, at the end of the day, it got to the point where I thought, okay, time to get out of here because none of the kids really know who I am. And that special moment that I was hoping for, I was going to inspire a young person, just wasn't coming to be. And then a young guy pulled up and he had his Dodgers t shirt on. He's had his hat pulled down real tight. And he says, Mr. Everywhere. I said, yeah, he recognized me, got the name right may I have an autographed card? I said, of course you can. So I signed the card for him and handed it to him. He stayed in that spot in front of me. Then he looked up at me and said, Mr. Of Rare? I said, yeah. Said, do you want to swap shirts? Well, of course I want to swap shirts. Let's do it. Right? I'm six foot one. My plane weight 210 pounds and he's four foot nothing. His plane weight is about 60 pounds, if that. So he takes off his hat to take off his t-shirt. We took off his hat. I noticed that he had absolutely not a stitch of hair on his head. And he, I found out the backstory from his parents when I returned the t-shirt, because obviously I'm thinking they might want this t-shirt. Uh, I didn't want to go, you know, quote the obvious, but there was a concern that who knows what, how his story was going to turn out. But his parents had told me that he'd been diagnosed with leukemia and battled chemotherapy and went through all that and, and lost all his hair. So we had swapped shirts. He pulled that sweatshirt on, hung down to his knees, and he was gone. 
And I left thinking, well, that was pretty special. You know, the, the young guy inspired me versus me inspiring him. And talk about a right place at the right time. But there's more to the story. A year later, we're playing at home against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and we lose. And Winnipeg's got a good team. And I took a helmet right into the elbow, blew up my bursa sack. And I got a couple of beers, got some painkillers, and I just want to go home. I just want to go home after the game. But oftentimes you have family and friends. You have the girlfriend or the wife. Or some guys had both their girlfriend and their wives waiting for them after the game, which is a bit of a, a precarious situation. To say. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, they're all there. And the common thread is get them next time. That's a pretty good football team. And they're filling our glasses up a little bit, even though our glass is not just half empty, but it's just been shattered by a pretty good football team. So we're standing around, and I hear a voice. Mr. of Rare, I recognize that voice. I look down. And the second thing I noticed was that he had that sweatshirt on. And it had ketchup and mustard and boogers, destroyed the shirt. But the first thing I noticed was that he had curly hair like I did when I was a little boy at the Boys and Girls Club. And it resonated with me. Again, the right time at the right place. Uh, I realized in that moment that all the physical wear and tear and the losses and everything I did, the training, everything else, in a weird way, brought me to that moment. And if I hadn't climbed some mountains, if I hadn't overcome some challenges, if I didn't work to get faster, stronger, and put the time in, uh, if I wasn't passionate, if I didn't believe in myself, if I wasn't in my right time, my right place when I played football, because it just I just felt like I was always there in that place when I was playing football. I was meant to be for that chapter of my life. And if I had quit, if I had doubted myself or listened to some people who said I wasn't good enough, then who knows what would have come of me. And I would have missed that moment. And so uh, get into your right place and your right time sometimes requires an investment of time, energy. Um, it challenges your confidence. It does a lot of things. But when you're in that right place at the right time, the journey isn't that difficult. It actually fits. It fits like a great suit. And uh, that's what that right time in the right place does for you. And um, I look back, and when I think about my career as a professional athlete, I can't remember a score of a game. I can remember the injuries. And I also remember the teammates and the people I met along the way. Because it was such a personal, authentic, genuine journey, part of my life. And many of the life lessons I learned through that experience apply to what I do today as a leadership, team building, and uh, coaching consultant. So that's my story for the day. I'm hoping that you are finding your right place at your right time and that uh, you're in a position to, one, change people's lives, or on the other side of the coin, be receptive to other people who will change your life in a positive manner. I'm Ken Abrer. Visit my website, www.kenabrer.com, or check me out uh, on my social media platforms on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, I'll chat with you real soon. Take care.